Jasmine, and I would like to introduce you to my guest co-host for this episode, Omena Boachi. Hi, Jasmine. Thank you so much for having me. I'm extremely excited to be on the show. Hello UX, a user-focused podcast aimed to help those pivoting into UX design. We are here to empower designers and help those transitioning into the UX field by providing education, resources, and a platform to talk about their experiences. Thank you for joining us today for our episode, In the Trenches, Chronicles of a UX Boot Camper. Some of you may be considering attending an immersive boot camp, an intense three-month commitment that will cause you to really focus and perhaps cut you off of all your available free time. Today, you will hear first-hand experience of my guest co-host, Omena Boachi. She will detail what a day-to-day looks like for her, and she will also share some of her coping mechanisms for stress. Like we mentioned before in our opening statement, at Hello UX, we want to use our platform to share the first-hand experiences of our listeners. We want to share the experience of others like you who are going through the same path with the expectation of bringing you more insight to a major life-changing decision that you are about to make. I met Omena a few months back when she reached out to me because she was thinking of applying to the Adobe Digital Academy. Omena, please share with our listeners your background and your journey into UX design. So I'm originally from London, England, and I've been in New York for a while now, but I was, yeah, I was raised in London. I went to London College of Fashion, and my background is in fashion journalism and styling. And so most recently I was writing for InStyle magazine, and last year is when I actually decided to transition into UX design. But I'll, I'll go back, so I'll take you through the steps. So my background is in fashion journalism and styling, I was born and raised in London and I moved to New York a few years ago. So I went to London College of Fashion and whilst I was at university, we were given the option to do an internship in our last year. And at that time, um, I used to actually come to New York and New Jersey every summer for a number of years because I have family here. And every time I came, I I loved America. (laughs) I was literally like, When I finished university, I want to live in America. So for my internship, whilst I was at university, I um, literally emailed every magazine you can think of that's in New York. And I just said to them, you know, that I'm a student at London College of Fashion and I would love to intern with their magazine. Um, And, you know, some people said, no, we don't, you know, we don't take people from abroad. And fortunately, um, a few magazines got back to me. So In Touch Weekly got back to me in style got back to me I believe Essence magazine got back to me um, and fortunately I actually ended up interning with InStyle and it was an absolutely amazing experience I just loved it I loved working in New York I loved the diversity that I saw in New York I loved um, I just loved the way the magazines operated um, so following my internship I went back to London and honestly I was sad to leave <laughs> I was sad to just leave the city and I decided that after university I would want to move back to America. So again, I was in the process of um, emailing people again and this time I was asking for a job. So I emailed around several places, different um, magazines, different broadcast shows that show fashion. Um, And I just basically said, you know, I've graduated with a degree in fashion journalism and do they have any opportunities? And fortunately CBS, the early show, they got back to me and they said um, that they had a position for an internship and I interned with them for a while and then they offered me a position as a fashion assistant so I was assisting there on the show with the fashion producer and I was there for a couple of years and then um, I decided I wanted to move more over into styling so I started assisting Freddie Lieber who's a celebrity stylist um, and he starred everyone from Diana Ross to Beyonce to all these fabulous people. Oh, He's wow. an amazing guy. And yeah, I started assisting him, which was such an amazing experience. So I met a number of celebrities. We worked for a number of big brands. And then um, after that, I fortunately was offered um, to sign with an agency. So I was offered a position with an agency. And how it works is when you're a stylist, the agency will get you work with different clients. So I had the opportunity to work with Macy's, to work with Bloomingdale's, to work with Amazon, to work with all these different clients and do shoots for them. And then about three years ago, I decided that I wanted to move back into journalism. So I contacted InStyle and um, I started working there. I started um, writing again, which has been great. And then last year, the world turned upside down. Of course, <laughs> and, uh, yes. 
And then I started thinking, you know, what else? So, so I was stuck at home. I was working remotely initially at the time. And I started thinking, you know, what do I want to do with myself going forward? You know, shoots aren't happening. And um, because of the nature of shoots, you know, you have to be very close to people. So there were no shoots happening last year. So I wasn't able to do that through the agency. Um, and so I started thinking, you know, what are my other interests? What would I want to pivot into if I was to go into another field? And tech has always been an area that's of big interest to me. I've been a techie since I was a young person. Um, so yeah, I started thinking about tech. And at the time, and another thing I love is food, so I love cooking. <laughs> and at the time, uh, during quarantine, I had I had loads of time. I had loads of time on my hands. So I started cooking more, and I started trying out different recipes. And I started sharing them on Instagram. And I noticed that a lot of my male friends they were cooking as well. And we used to swap recipes and swap images of what we were making. And so I, then I decided to myself, actually, let me start a separate Instagram page purely for the things that I'm making and the um, food that I'm showing on Instagram. So I started a separate page and I called it My Man Can Cook. And on this page, I showcased things that I was making and things that some of my male friends were making. And a lot of the guys were like, you know, why don't you start like a website and like make a site and then we can upload pictures and stuff like that. I was like, oh, okay, that sounds cool. So I looked into how I wanted to build a site, you know, what it should look like. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I stumbled upon UX and all its principles. I was like, okay, how am I going to make this site engaging? How am I going to make men want to come onto this site? Um, what should the site navigation be? What should the, um, the headers be at the top of the site? So I started reading more and more. And I think the more I read about UX, um, the more intrigued I became. I was like, oh my God, I, I love you know creating something for a user. I love the principles of this. Um, I love the research behind it. And I love the fact that you can create something um, that has the user in mind. The website that you created, My Man Can Cook. Was that your first attempt into ever creating a website? Yeah, that was my first attempt. Um, and that's why I was so keen to read more about creating a website and what it entailed and what goes into it. Um, so yeah, that's what kind of led me to UX. I would like to ask you, these different roles that you've had and skills obtained prior, how have they helped you transition into UX design? What made me think, oh, do you know what? I think actually I want to pivot into UX and I think this works perfectly with my journalism skills. I'm able to bring my research. I'm able to bring my interviewing skills. I'm able to bring my creativity from fashion. You know, I'm extremely detail orientated. I think you have to be that for, um, you know, to do product design. So I was like, okay, I'm able to carry all these skills over. So I feel like this could actually be a perfect fit. Um, so then I started looking at different courses um, and different places that I could apply. And obviously I wanted somewhere, um, for me, I wanted somewhere that was reputable because um, right. you know, I want a job after. Mm -hmm. So that was actually important for me. So um, I started researching and I came across General Assembly um, and I loved the program. The sound of the syllabus sounded great. Um, what I didn't love was the price. <laughs> right, right. I think it's a big it's, steep yeah. for a lot of us, yes. <laughs> It, it, it was quite expensive and I, you know, I couldn't afford to pay for that at the time. Um, so I started looking at different programs and different um, scholarships that were being offered. Um, and then I came across Adobe Digital Academy mm -hmm. um, and I actually applied for that. And um, I had to do a case study. And um, fortunately, I was offered the position for the academy, which has truly been a blessing. And um, yeah, so that that's basically brings me to now. So the academy started in January. And um, what month are we in now? March. I've been on the academy for about five weeks now. Um, so I'm halfway through. And yeah, that's where I am. <laughs> You've been doing the immersive training. So that yes. is very long hours, yeah. Monday through Friday. And so I know how intense it can be. What transition have you had to make from being and the work process that you do as a fashion stylist and now transition to UX designer? Are there any shits that you had to do mentally? So I think that there's a lot of similarities um, in the sense that with styling, I was styling the user in a way that conveyed their character and their personality. So I had to analyze this. I had to think about what they like. I had to think about what they dislike. And this could have been anything from colors um, to a style of shoe, um, to pain points about an item of clothing. 
Um, so I had to think of that. And I think in UX, it's again, very similar. So you start by doing your research and you have to, you know, how, what are the habits? What are the behaviors of the user? What are their pain points? And you have to keep all of this in mind as you're going through the design process. And so I think that's similar to um, styling in that sense. Right. And so when it comes to working in a group, does the same thing happen and in, in when, when you're a fashion stylist? Do you have to come in, you know, in consensus with a whole group of where you could go next? Uh, so, yeah, so with okay. styling, you work in teams. So there's the photographer, there's the paper artist, there is the art director, and um, you'll all come to, there'll be a brief. So the client might say, we want the shoot to be all about red. So the model should be wearing red, the shoe should be red, the makeup okay. should have elements of red. Um, and so that's where you agree. So you agree on the brief. But then in terms of what the model was wearing, in terms of the styling aspect, that was my job. So I would always have kind of the final say on, on the aspects of styling within that brief. Um, and so I think that's what's slightly different from um, UX. In UX, you're having to collaborate as a team and you're even every, basically nearly every decision is made as a team. Um, and that was nice because I liked the idea of, you know, bouts and ideas of creativity with other people. And um, so I actually, I think I've actually enjoyed that aspect of working with people. Awesome. Okay, everyone. So many of you might be wondering, what does it look like to be an immersive UX boot camper? And I'm glad you asked. We're going to go ahead and take a listen to a day in the life of an immersive boot camper. Hi, hello UX. My name is Omen Abwachi and today I'm going to be giving you a bit of a walkthrough through my day. Um, so at the moment it's 7am Eastern time and I've just woken up. Um, I'm about to have a shower. Usually before I have a shower, I listen to um, a daily devotional from my church and it's just kind of um, confessions for the day. So I tend to listen to those whilst I'm in the shower and then I'll begin to get ready for my day. So now I'm just about to have my breakfast before I start the class. Um, so as you're probably aware, most well, most classes, I think, nationwide are remote. For the um, class that I attend at General Assembly, it is actually remote. So it's 9 to 5 um, every day. Well, it ends up being about 9 to 4.30 every day. And then between 12 and 1, we have a lunch break. So I'm just about to sign on to my computer. And in the morning, they do, um, they do the teachers make a few announcements. And then there's a show and tell. So we're given the schedule at the beginning of the week and one student will share about, you know, something that they want to tell the class about themselves or their lives or, you know, anything new that they've learned about UX. Um, so today um, I have one of my friends actually is doing her show and tell and um, yeah, I'm interested to see what she shares. So we've just finished this morning's lecture, um, which was on doing a competitive analysis. So the lecturers were talking about how to do a competitive analysis for our upcoming project. Um, we're actually working in groups at the moment. I'm in a group of four and we had to come up with um, a product. So the, the goal of the study is to produce a product um, in a space that we find. Um, and so we're actually just in the process of kind of thinking about what space we want to produce a product for. Um, where we want to do more research. Um, so my friend's show and tell was great. It went really well. She showed us actually um, a shirt that had been signed by Kobe Bryant for her boyfriend. Um, so that was really nice. Um, so yeah, I'm just about to have my lunch. I'm trying to think what to have. So we only have an hour. So I usually just have um, something quite quick. Um, today, I think I'm just gonna have a quick salad. And um, yeah, I just kind of use this time just to step away from the computer because it can be a bit draining being at the computer all day. So I tend to have my lunch away from the computer um, and make a few phone calls. Like I tend to call my family on my lunch break because they're actually in London. So they are five hours ahead of New York time. Um, so I tend to do a few catch up calls, speak to friends and yeah. So I finished my lunch and this afternoon we have studio time, which is a time that they allow on some days when you have a big assignment due, they'll give studio time, which is time aside from lecture time where you can just actually work on your project during the day. So we actually have that now from one till 
4.30, we're able to work in our groups on our project. And so what we're doing at the